So at this point, I sincerely hope that this picture over here on the right is starting to look familiar. And we're going to go a little bit farther and introduce revenue curves into this exact same graph. And the idea here is that with perfect competition, we could go on with just cost curves because all the, the what was going on in the market was completely independent of what was going on in the firm. The firm was so small that it didn't affect the market at all. And the next two kinds of market structures that we're going to look at, called monopolistic competition and then monopoly, both of those, in both of those, the firm impacts the market structure. The firm has is big enough that it actually affects the market a little bit. So we need to introduce the revenue curves into this exact same graph before we can go any farther. And so this video is just going to introduce the revenue curves, and then we'll go into the different kinds of market structures that deal with them. And I should say there's also one other market structure that is kind of like it's another in, it's a different way of looking at monopolistic competition, and that's called oligopoly. And I may cover that. I'm not sure if I'm going to or not, but we'll see. So if oligopoly also gets thrown in there, it may. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to introduce a demand curve. And I've already kind of played with the numbers a little bit so that they all work out kind of nicely on this graph. And remember, this is, again, we're doing this for the surfboard business. So if there's only one surfboard for sale in this town, let's say, there's some surfer that absolutely loves to surf that'll pay $550 for it. So that is at, with one, with only one surfboard available, someone will pay $550. Then the next three surfboards that get made, no one's going to buy those for $550, but they might buy them for $500. And then if there's 12 surfboards to be able to sell all those, you're going to have to be able to sell them at $450. And you can kind of see how the logic goes from here. I've worked through this a bunch of times before. So I'm just going to drag it down. And that gives us our demand curve. Now the next thing that I just want to reiterate, and again this should be review also, is that demand is also average revenue. That because we're selling these in a market, the price that we're selling each one of these at is always the same. So if we want to get rid of four surfboards, we have to sell every single one of them for $500. So we know that demand is also average revenue because that's just the average price that we're selling them at because the price is always the same. So then we get total revenue, which is just equal to average revenue. Sorry, messed that up a little bit. Which is just equal to average revenue times our quantity. So you get $550 for one surfboard, you make $550. You get $500 for four surfboards, you get $2,000. And dragging this all the way down, that's our average revenue, or sorry, excuse me, that's our total revenue for any of these production and price, uh, price combinations. Now again, this should also be review. Marginal revenue is just equal to, and sorry, I'm not going to start it on that first line because that would not work. Marginal revenue is again just the change in total revenue, and I'm going to need parentheses here. So it's the change in total revenue, which is just 2,000 minus 550 divided by the change in output. Divided, and I'm going to need parentheses here again. Divided by B8 minus b7. So divided by 4 minus 1. So that is the increase in revenue from selling those per unit for selling those additional three surfboards. Going from selling one surfboard to going from uh, to selling four surfboards. And dragging that all the way down we have our marginal revenue curve. So again marginal revenue is just the incremental increase in revenue per additional unit sold, or per, per additional unit produced and sold, I should say. So with this graph, I'm just going to blow it up really big so you can have a little second to look at it here. These are all of the curves that you should be familiar with, know what they do, understand them inside and out, and with that you should have a really, really strong basis to get down to actually working with these guys in different market structures. So with that, I am going to end this video and I'll see you in the next.